Lecture 8, Location, Planning, and Analysis. Location decisions are strategically important. They're closely tied to an organization's strategy. Are you looking for low cost? Are you looking for convenience to attract market share? They affect, your location affects the capacity and the flexibility, and your location represents a long-term commitment of resources. So that location also affects investment requirements, operating costs, revenues, operations, and it can impact your competitive advantage, and it also has importance to supply chains. So what are the objectives of your location decisions? So they're based off of profit potential or cost or customer service. You find a number of acceptable locations from which to choose. You think about your position in the supply chain. If you're at the end of the supply chain, you probably want accessibility, customer demographic, traffic patterns, local customers. If you're in the middle of the supply chain, you want to be close to either suppliers or markets. And if you're at the beginning of the supply chain, you might want to be near the source of raw materials. And then web-based retail organizations are effectively location independent. So if you are selling your goods online, you can, you can pretty much be anywhere. So location options. So existing companies have four options available. Number one is expand the existing facility. We just add some space. Number two is new location while retaining the existing facility. So I have a, a location here. I'm going to build another location in another city or somewhere else. Another option is to shut down one location and move to another. And then the fourth option is do nothing. It don't change. So when you talk about global locations, there's some facilitating factors. So there's a couple of things that contributed to the attractiveness of globalization. The first is trade agreements, things like NAFTA, GATT, uh, U.S.-China Trade Relations Act, EU, World Trade Organizations, those things. And then the other factor is technology. So it's easier and easier with communication and information technology to communicate with anyone around the world. So there's managerial implications for global operations. The first is language and cultural differences. So what, what you may be used to treating employees or treating coworkers could be interpreted very different in a different culture. So you have a, a risk of miscommunication you have to develop trust in that new culture. You have to trust them and they have to trust you. There's different management styles. So in one culture, one management style works better than in a different culture. And then you have the problem of corruption and bribery. It depends on where you're at, but, but some societies are very accustomed to corruption and bribery. And, and that's, that's a, something you also have to deal with. Uh, there's increased travel costs. And then there's the challenges of managing operations that's here, there, and everywhere. There's the level of technology and resistance to te 
technological change. So you may go to a place where you can get really cheap labor, but they may not be as technologically savvy as you're used to. And then, then the domestic person may re resist locating even temporarily. So let's say you have a plant here and you want to replicate that plant in China. And what you really need is some of your best factory workers and managers to go to China to show them how to do it. Well, first off, they, there may be major family issues. Um, their kids are in school. Uh, their husband or wife has another job. You know, they're just regular family things. They may not even want to go there. Uh, why do I want to go there? I like it here. The second thing is, especially if you're shutting down this factory and relocating somewhere else, you may be dealing with hostile personnel where it's like, why would I want to go ch uh, train someone who's going to replace me? So that's another... Uh, concern. So here's the general procedure. Uh, first, you decide on what criteria you're going to use. Identify the important factors. Develop location alternatives. So you identify a country or countries for location. Identify the general region. Identify a small number of community alternatives. Identify the site alternatives among the community alternatives. And then you evaluate the alternatives and make a decision. Service and retail locations. So with a service and retail locations, the nearness to raw materials is not a consideration. If you are a jewelry store selling gold rings, silver rings, you don't care where you don't need to be close to the silver mine or the gold mine. Customer access is a prime location for some things such as restaurants or hotels, but it's not important for something like a service call center. They tend to be profit or revenue driven and so you're concerned with demographics, competition, traffic volume, patterns, convenience, so let's say that you're thinking of putting a restaurant in a mall. You might want to invest some time to see what the custom, what the traffic is doing in that area. Or, or is there people walking by? Do they look hungry? And then there's a clustering, similar types of business says locate near one another. So there's pros and cons with that. So uh, like we want to go out to eat and we're, we're trying to, to decide between Chipotle and Red Robin. You know, we don't know which one we want to go to. We like them both. So we get in the car and start driving that direction. Uh, at some point we have to decide. But it, they may be right next to each other, so it's like, I'm driving in the parking lot. Have we decided which one? Sometimes someone might, if you're located next to a, a restaurant, you, someone may be coming to that restaurant and then see yours and say, oh, no, well, let's go to yours instead. Or maybe there's a line at the other one they were going to and see that you don't have a line, come on in. Evaluating location alternatives. So there's different techniques. One is locational cost volume profit analysis. The next is factor rating, then the transportation model, and then the center of gravity method. So the cost volume profit analysis, a lot of times this is fixed cost, variable cost, Different locations have different fixed costs and variable costs. So here you have location A. Its fixed cost is $250,000. Its variable unit cost is $11. Location B has a fixed cost of $100,000. Its variable unit cost is $30. Location C 
and you can see see like that. So each of these you can actually calculate the total cost curve. So here, here's location D, the total cost. Then here's location A, location C, and location B. So if you look at this, you want the lowest total cost. So if your output is here, location B is the best choice. If your output is somewhere between here and here, location C is the best choice. And then if your your cost is or your quantity is somewhere here, location A is the best best choice. So this is a a cost profit volume analysis. So then this is a factor rating. So a photo processing company intends to open a new bra uh, branch, which of the following table contains information on two potential locations, which is better. So what you do is you, you come up with your factors. So proximity to existing source, traffic volume, rental costs, size, layout, operating costs, and then you weight these. So 10% to this, 5% to this, 40% to this, and, and so you, you have this weighting. And then you um, assign a score out of 100 to each of these factors for alternative 1, alternative 2. So this one, proximity to existing source, that got really good. This one's not so good. Traffic volume, they're about equal. Rental cost, this one's more expensive. This one's cheaper, so it got a better score. The size, this one's better. Layout, this one's better. Operating cost, this one's better. So now you, you take the weight times the score and you, you come up with these, these scores and you add it together. So in this case, alternative two has a better score than alternative one. So this is factor rating. You can do this with location. You can do this with a lot of things where you're evaluating. You decide what's important ahead of time. You evaluate the weights and then you you do the evaluation. Transportation problem. So this involves finding the lowest co uh, cost plan for distributing stock of various goods or supplies from multiple points of origin to multiple destinations that demand goods. So the shipping points are any place where goods are sent from and so this is like factories, warehouses, departments, and then destinations are any point that receives goods. So this is factories, warehouses, departments. So you have something supply and demand. So here you have three different factories, one, two, three, and you're shipping to four different warehouses. And, and what you have here is the cost of shipping. So from factory one to factory A costs four units. Here from factory two to factory A costs 12. So you see each of these. And then here's the supply. So factory one can supply 100, factory two can supply 200, and factory three can supply 150. So your total capacity is 450, and then your total demand is 450. So here's, here's where it's going to. So the question, the real question here is, which factory do I ship how much to what warehouse? So this is, it's, it's a complicated problem, but you start out finding the initial solution. So here, you, you see right here, this one, it's a unit cost of one right here. That's pretty obvious. You put 100 here. This one, the cheapest in this row here is right here. So you put 90 here because that's all that's needed right here. And, and then the cheapest one here is 60. 
So you got a hundred and you needed 160 that's there. So um, that's that's the initial solution. So you're finding the lowest the lowest cost and putting however much is needed or available in that place. Then you go to the next step where you you start out and say, well, what's left? And and you start going through this and you end up this is this is where you ship from and to in this case. So that's your initial solution. And then you can actually improve the solution. So at, you say, well, how much does this cost? And is there a little bit cheaper alternative? So you start looking at the cheaper alternatives, uh, an iteration, and here's the improved solution. So from so the answer here is from factory one, we want to ship 10 units to factory C or to warehouse C and 90 to warehouse D. Now if this 200 for factory uh, two, you want 110 to warehouse C and 90 to warehouse B. So this is only taken into account supply, demand, and transportation costs. There's another method for locating a distribution center and that is the center of gravity method. So here you have destination one, destination two, destination three, destination four. And so you, you say, well, I want to locate somewhere the, in the center of gravity of these locations. So you, you take each of these, you get coordinates here, coordinates, coordinates, coordinates. And if you you remember how you calculate the center of gravity, it's distance and, and weight. So you come here, so using this center of gravity method, this, this is where the center of gravity is. So if you look at uh, Tennessee, uh, Tennessee is a, is a popular place for some distribution, some factories. If you look at the center of gravity of the population of the country, it's somewhere between here and Chicago, is, is uh, between Tennessee and Chicago. Chicago tends to have higher costs, Tennessee has lower costs, so a lot of, a lot of companies will do that center of gravity method and, and put their distribution or factory sort of in these low cost areas that's still towards the center. Chapter summary. So we talked about the need and nature of location decisions, global locations, the general procedure for making location decisions, identifying country, region, community, and site, talked about service and retail locations, and then several methods for evaluating location alternatives.